Hey guys, Stephen Tony here with a special second video of the week. Yes, um, I have some extra time on my hands on this weekend, so I figured I would, you know, offer up a fun second video, um, mainly as an October treat. Um, and it's also a video I was thinking of doing for a while and just finally said, you know what, I've got the time, let's do it. And for this video, I wanted to discuss uh, two French erotic horror films that I honestly do believe are worth any film fan's uh, time, you know, I mean, I know this sort of thing isn't for everybody's, uh, taste, but the two I am going to be, like, discuss discussing, I think, uh, ought to be exceptions to the rule. Uh, and the f first one that I want to talk about is 1973's La Comtesse Noire, or the Night Countess. Now, don't be fooled by this uh, title here. It's really not exactly what is on the... Um, is actually in the uh, fi uh, film. Uh, this sequence is more along the lines of the shorter uh, cut uh, mentioned here at the bottom. Um, yes, uh, like this is uh, a film by the notorious, infamous, and famous Jess Franco of Spain. Uh, and it stars his second wife, uh, Lino Romei. Uh, now, this is a very, uh, a very interesting film, I have to uh, say. Um, uh, I first... Um, saw it I think it was like it you know it like was either just prior to the pandemic or you know or maybe during the pandemic I'm not sure which now but we had a free week of one of these um for pay only channels and on that channel's on demand section they had this film, and it was the uh, longer French softcore cut. So I just turned that on one e evening, um, um, expecting the utmost trashiest thing I think I would probably, you know, ever, ever see, like next to actual porno. Um, and I ended up being very surprised. It was actually a well-made movie. Uh, basically, Lena Rome uh, uh, plays this, um, woman, um, Irina uh, Karsten. Uh, she's a countess of the... Um, again, infamous, uh, 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 Karnstein, uh, vampire family. Uh, and she's living in this remote village near Portugal. Um, and it's just basically about her, you know, the various people she encounters, you know, in drains. Um, what's really unique about her is, you know, and again, like, this is not uh, an image that are, uh, that reflects uh, Franco's preferred cut of the film. Uh, film, uh, she is an energy vampire. Now, energy vampires... I'm not sure are as known as normal vampires, but what they are, from what I've read, is that they can actually drain someone's energy from them. Um, I 
believe it's either through Yosef I engagement, like um like meaning they just stare at you or there's this uh sort of vibe that they can send out, you know, spiritually again like, you know, of them selves and you know and they just you know uh bore into you and can start sucking your like literal start sucking your literal life energy from you to where you like in your week and franco's irena here actually goes a step further uh instead of being a blood drinker or your uh and sceptical uh energy vampire she drains people through the act of lovemaking, um, you know, and her character is shown as bisexual, you know. She's uh, shown in the film uh, seducing men and women, and it just shows her existence as lonely and doomed, you know. She wants to be free of that life, but unfortunately does not have the courage to um do it herself if like you and you will you know um and one of the people in her orbit is this uh fellow uh royal who's on an existential crisis uh, uh quest and his love for her, his always feeling her presence of her, uh, um, you know, his always feeling her presence um, forces her to make a decision, you know, on what to do all about herself. Um, uh, the film's ultra low budget, but it like well. But uh, Franco was a, able to shoot on on a location. Now, most people think it uh, uh, that R Rome's character actually appears in scenes in the daytime. But uh, if like yeah, you look past that as a continuity error, you could say that it is. Uh, Irina Carlstein, um, Irina Karnstein, I'm, um, I'm, I meant to say, um, as having transcended the normal boundaries of being, um, an immortal vampire and that she can exist in both daylight and nightlife. Uh, yeah, you know, um, and it is, you know, it's a very, strangely a compelling film as well you know i mean it might not look at it at first glance but you know if you really do go into this with little to no expectations um i really do think it will s surprise you now again this is not everybody's cup of uh, tea and you do certainly have to put yourself in the right mood for it because uh, there is a lot of nudity in here. I mean, like, there is a lot of nudity and a lot of, you know, more adult sections. I mean, like, not anything, you know, extreme, but... Um, but, you know, I mean, it will have you feeling like you're a voyeur at, uh, like, um, at times um, and in need of a really hot shower. But, <laughs> um, um, but you know, uh, <laughs> but, like, yeah, um, like, I don't know, like, there were, like, it was just something about it when I, I saw it that, you know, I just was, you know, enthralled with it. You know, and not just because Lena Rame spends a good chunk of the film, you know, bearing it all. All but. Um, 
you know, but I mean, it is a surprisingly thoughtful film in its what uh, way because you know uh, Franco actually gets somewhat phil less uh, 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 philosophical um, I'm here you know uh, about, about uh, uh, stuff uh, stuff like you know Rome's character even though she's a mute you know who engages in this uh, very interesting uh, third person, um, the present, like, narration, um, e, you know, even though she isn't speaking, she still, like, she still, uh, conveys through, through her face, her eyes, her, her body language, you know, that she does not want to do, um, a lot of what, you know, she is doing, uh, like, you know, she is very uh, conflicted, you know, about a, a lot of it, you know, but she is drawn by this very horrible and dark destiny that she can either choose to end or, you know, or let continue for, for whatever the reason. But, you know, in many scenes, it's clear she wants to to, you know, stop her family's dark dynasty. But at the same time, doesn't necessarily feel she has the courage. I like the courage. Uh, yeah, um, it's mainly set piece style f uh, filmmaking. You know, it's just, you know, her, you know, it's just Lena Rome going from character to character, you know, just um, um, having these experiences, uh, says, you know, um, and ultimately she must, you know, drain them if she is to survive, you know, um, and, and again, you know, it isn't everybody's cup of tea, you know, like some of the you know, more adult sequences uh, like may have like a squirming more from personal embarrassment like rather than like the scenes being, you know, hard to watch. <laughs> uh, watch, but um, I do highly recommend it. I, you know, it's a very different, you know, vampire film um, and one I truly... Be believe if he, if he, you uh, do choose to take it on, uh, will find a uh, fairly interesting yourself. Um. Oh yeah, you know. Um. And one. Well, I mean, one other uh, thing. Uh, this actually came in a blue case when I bought it. Um, but I switched it to, to a black, uh, case because I thought it, uh, uh, complemented the colors, uh, here. So, so yeah, so, so yeah, like that is, uh, Female Vampire, uh, aka the Night Countess. And the other film I wanted to show you all is... The Evil Wakened of Count Zaroff, uh, a.k.a. Seven Women for uh, Satan. Uh, this is from 1974, and it was written and directed by, and also starring, Michelle Lamoine, who um, actually started out um, as an actor in a avant-garde artsy films, who later transitioned to to you know genre fare, and then ended up becoming a big figure in the French softcore and hardcore scene. Mm. 
uh, scene, but um, um, here he makes an unofficial sequel to the short story and to the film, The Most uh, Dangerous Ga Game. Um, he plays the son of the original Count Zaroff, who is um, haunted by his father's uh, sinister legacy and is trying his best to avoid ending up like, you know, his father. Now, the reason I have these two editions is because the uh, friendship release here is the one I watch because it's got a good, uh, you know, subtitle translation of the Italian of the French track, I meant to say, say yes. But the special features on here are not English friendly, so I got the uh, Mondo Macabro um, edition because those special features are, are English subtitle uh, friendly. Um, now, I'm not going to show you the back of this one or the front of this one. Uh, because there is none uh, nudity. Uh, you know, I don't want this video uh, flagged. But um, anyway, um, in the film, uh, Zoff is trying to avoid his, f um, his father's infamous legacy, but his butler, who is also the son of his father's butler, uh, made a promise to his father that he would ensure that the son Boris would would keep his father's legacy alive. And again, it's junk, junk, uh, just a series of vignette-esque encounters where where the um, Eve Butler. Uh, tries to get uh, Lamoine's Boris, you know, interested in the art of depravity and 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 a debaucher uh, and a debauchery, but he somehow manages to uh, fight this off, partly with the help of the ghost of the of the woman. He loved. Um, he was actually um, about to marry this woman, but uh, she was murdered as they were uh, dancing. Um, the audience uh, um, isn't sure if it was her. Um, um, if it was her jealous wife beating uh, um, husband, or if it was the butler to ensure. Uh, uh, Boris Zaroff uh, stayed alone, but she makes appearances every time he's about to be be uh, seduced by his father's lifestyle and tries to pull him back uh, from it. Now, now um, it's not as you know, kinky as the Jess Franco th uh, film, but there's still quite a bit of nudity in this f uh, film, but it also tackles more of like you know, a thriller aspect than pure on horror. The horror is purely uh, psychological from the point of view of the uh, title character, but the, there is still an abundant amount of nudity, um, like you know, in here, but it does offer some great uh, uh, performance. Says uh, uh, by Lemoyne, by by uh, Jess Franco, Reg uh, um, and also by uh, Jess Franco uh, regular Howard Vernon, who um, who plays the uh, butler. Who is at his, who is at his slimiest, and and like also his most uh, 
I'm a I'm an inhuman. And uh, also from the other, and also from the female character, played by um, Joelle uh, Cure. And this uh, um, ended uh, up uh, being her last film in France because she did not agree with um, uh, producers and directors' uh, decisions to go a, a love, you know, to go a little more uh, triple X um, in the uh, production uh, values. Mm. Um, so she ended up retiring afterwards, but she gives a tremendous performance as the angelic being to a uh, hey, hey, no, Vernon's like your evil butler. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, yeah, you know, and Ed the Heart is really this battle of God, God and evil for a man's uh, soul and how it uh, comes around is very different. I mean, I was not expecting it and how, I know that, and um, um, how it did. But Lamoine's script, you know, you know, his direction and like acting, uh, making this film really worthwhile to uh, see. I you know, in spite of all of the nudity and the, you know, more, you know, um, adult, you know, themes as goes with, with it, with, so, so, um, he actually shot at a real ca uh, castle in France, which is just exquisitely beautiful, you know, and he also films the French, uh, countryside, side in a very r r uh, romantic way as well, um, like, you know, even though a, I'm like even the, uh, like though, part of the horror in Zaroff's life occur, um, like occurs the, there, Lemoyne still manages to keep keep the area looking, uh, beautiful, and you know just, you know and just, like you know a. Ple uh, you know, a pleasure for the eyes to uh, see. Uh, see now, uh, now uh, both of these uh, um, editions are still of um, are still available. Uh, the Mondo version is now in a blue case, but you know it's still worth um, having. Uh, and this is the uh, 4K and Blu-ray edition from uh, France. Um, it's now in just uh, you know a keep ca uh, case, but but like you know, um, it's still worth you know uh, you know uh, checking it out. Um, I don't have a 4K player yet, but I was able to watch the uh, Blu-ray of this, uh, and it does look. Good. Uh, good. So I'm figuring the same print this uh, company used um, is on the Mondo um, edition as well. So, so yeah, you know, um, I, you know, and again, like with the uh, Fr uh Franco film. The story and you know and characters are still very engaging, and both I think are totally worth um um I know fans uh time like you know, you know and again other I mean and again like uh, I said you know these are not uh, for everyone one but I do think. Uh, you, you'll be uh, pleasantly s s s surprised by how good these films are, uh, you know, in spite of being uh, softcore. 
Uh, uh, you know, so, but you know, um, that'll do it for the uh, uh, for this uh, video. Um, th thanks again to everyone who's watching. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this, like with uh, my others um, I've done so far. Um, and if you like, would like to, uh, uh, please leave um, a comment below um, and uh, hit the the like button and the bell notification if you go um, if you should choose to subscribe. Um, and and uh, again, thanks for uh, for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.